All right, guys, welcome to uh, 31 Days of Horror, where I'm going to try to re review a horror movie every day for the month of October. Let's see if I get through with it, but at least I'm going to start with the day. This is October 1st, and last night, for the first time, I watched the movie Us, which I've been really looking forward to watching, and uh, I saw the trailers, probably played on YouTube before. And, you know, I love the classic movies, and there's a lot of classics that I've been dying to see. But I don't keep up with a lot of the new movies like I used to. But every now and then I'll catch a uh, trailer or a review of something that people say is good, and it gets me interested, so I want to check it out. I saw this had a lot of good reviews. It looked interesting from the trailer, which I'm playing in the background. The trailer didn't really show a whole lot. The only thing that it showed was that there's this family... And there's basically like evil doppelgangers of the family. And, um, but it didn't really show a whole lot more. And it looked like it was going to be scary as hell, really. <laughs> um, there's some pretty creepy stuff in the trailer. So I'm going to give spoilers in this and I'm not going to rate it, you know, one out of 10 or whatever, because I realized, you know, I have to make some kind of a system for that. But I'm going to say whether it's good or bad. What I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and I want to say that I did like it. I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, it wasn't really what I expected. So, like I said, the trailer didn't really show a whole lot. It showed enough to really get some interest out of me. Um, I expected it to be scary as hell. Maybe a lot of pop-out scares, a lot of really eerie, disturbing imagery and stuff. And it wasn't really so much that. I think it was more of a story-based um, but it was very original and unique, and, uh, I've read some people say that it kind of copied off of a Twilight Zone episode, but everything, you know, copies off something else, everything is inspired by something else, but to me, I hadn't really seen a lot of stuff like this. Maybe, you know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers or something, because, you know, you got, like, duplicate people there, and maybe kind of, like, Slither a little bit, um... But let's just talk about the plot a little bit. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, there is this girl with her family, and they're basically at a carnival, I guess, Santa Cruz Beach. I guess there's a carnival there. And basically she walks into this kind of funhouse place that says, find yourself. Um, she walks in there, and there's like mirrors and stuff. Well there ends up being a mirror image of her and uh, she's turned with her back to the mirror so you see like the back of her head reflected on the mirror she turns around but her mirror image doesn't turn around and she sees like the back of her own head and basically uh, it kind of ends there and it, it, the timing there is like 1986 and then we jump into the future when this girl is older or is it the same girl okay uh, we'll talk about that later but I've already had those questions, already seeing a lot of horror movies and, you know, movies in general, whatever, wrestling. I'm always making predictions, and you kind of already get the idea of what maybe could happen, and you're wondering, you know, was there another being in there? You know, did they swap places? You know, I don't know. But the idea is that you're supposed to see that she's older now, and she has her own husband, and she has her own kids, a boy and a girl. Well, um, I guess they want to go to this vacation to, I think they want to go to Santa Cruz or something uh, for a family vacation. She doesn't really want to go there, but her husband insists on it. Uh, the acting in, in this is pretty good. Uh, everybody played dual roles because, like I said, the family has like an evil doppelganger version of themselves. So they each played uh, those both. Um, and especially the main female uh, she, you know, probably had the biggest role, and she probably did the best job, but the husband is really funny, and there's a lot of comedy in this, and I read that in the reviews, and uh, there is a lot of comedy. I guess that Jordan Peele, the guy who directed this, um, is a comedian, so he also made Get Out, which a lot of people said was really great, and uh, might have to watch that sometime, but I was really interested in this one. Anyways, they go on vacation there, and um, I didn't think it took a whole lot of time to get into the action when, uh, you know, first of all, there's a scene with them hanging out at the beach, and uh, 
they are with their friends and Tim Heidecker is one of their friends and uh, he's one of the main actors that I knew in this movie because he was on Tim and Eric's awesome show which I used to be addicted to that it's absurdity but uh, he's in the, in this so um, I've loved his role in this and his wife if for an example of some of the comedy some of the stuff between him and his wife he asked you know if the uh, main lady wanted a drink and she said no you know I'll stick with water he asked his wife you know do you want do you want a drink you want thirds she's drinking alcohol and he's like i gotta get your medicine and he pulls out the alcohol and pours her a drink and he's like what's the magic words and she's like i hate you he's like okay good enough for me I'm like whoa that's brutal well uh, so there's comedy like that um, but anyways the uh, main family their son's name is jason i think uh or Jordan, but I think it's, was it Jason or Jordan? You know, it really doesn't even explain, it doesn't give like a synopsis on the back of this, unfortunately. But anyways, her son finds that same funhouse type deal, whatever. She He walks close to there, I don't know if he goes in or not, or he uses a bathroom next to it. But he sees a guy standing there like with his arms spread out, and there's like blood dripping down his fingers, we don't really know what's going on with that. Later on, he draws a picture of him and his mom sees it, but his mom freaks out because he disappeared for a while. She doesn't want him disappearing from her. We see some flashbacks sometimes, too, of this girl, this woman when she was a girl, how um, she was traumatized after that incident, and her family has taken her to, like, a psychiatrist. She wasn't the same as before. Um, but anyways, this family... Uh, they're ended up confronted by the other family. Uh, the son or someone says, hey, there's a family outside. And so it's nighttime and you see like their silhouettes like in the light. And they're all kind of just standing together. And um, <clears throat> so the father is like, what do you want and stuff? And, and they won't leave. And uh, he ends up getting a baseball bat. And he's like, they, they called the cops, but the cops won't be there for like 15 minutes. And he's like, you know. The cops are on the way, but if you guys want some action, I'll bring some. So he's kind of uh, trying to act tough when he's really scared. Um, I thought, you know, why is it so dark? Why don't they shine the lights on him or something while they turn on the lights? Well, anyways, like the family ends up coming towards them, like the evil family comes towards them. And, uh, you know, the father has the baseball bat and the mother gathers the two kids. And I'm like, why don't they get some knives or something <laughs> like to defend themselves? But. You know, it's a horror movie, so I let a lot of things go. But um, anyway, the weird thing to me is the family comes in, the evil family comes in and basically makes them all sit down and they're like confronted with their evil family in the living room. And then it's like storytelling time. Okay, and this evil version of the main female and her name's like Red or whatever. She goes in the story about how this girl has a shadow and the girl, you know, gets all these luxurious things in life. She gets beautiful toys when the shadow gets, like, sharp objects. And she, uh, the beautiful girl, gets, uh, you know, good food while the shadow gets to eat raw rabbit. <laughs> it's kind of weird. And she has a weird voice and everything. They're all different spooky. Like, the sun has, like, a mask on covering his head, kind of like a sackcloth thing. And um, so they're all a little bit different. In the family but anyways they all end up the evil ones end up chasing them she's she basically says that, that the shadow and the girl were like tethered together and that this is going to be the untethering that she's going to separate themselves and that she's been waiting for this for a long time basically she wants revenge and uh, they're going to enjoy this and take their time untethering and so uh there's some scenes where they chase them out. You know, I thought the storytelling, it's really interesting, unique, and original. But it kind of brought down kind of my expectations from what the movie was before. Because, you know, I was expecting a bunch of jump scares and disturbing imagery and stuff. And it was more of a creepy kind of campfire story thing to me. But I love how the film progressed. Um, they end up kind of escaping from the evil family. And then we go to Tim Heidecker and his wife's home. And they've got two twin daughters and um there's more bickering between them uh, they hear the wife hears something outside she's like why don't you go outside and check and he doesn't want to 
he looks out the window and he's like, oh, I see something by the car over there. And she's like, what is it? And he's like, it's OJ. It's OJ Simpson. <laughs> she's like, how dare you? Well, evil doppelgangers of them end up coming in and killing him. And um, we see a little bit of blood there. This movie isn't bloody and gory, though. There's just a little bit of blood. Um, you know, there are some deaths, but it's nothing really graphic imagery like that. It's more of a disturbing story. And um, so the original family goes to Tim Heidecker's house, and they're replaced by the doppelgangers now. And I loved Tim Heidecker as... The evil one too. They they all make noises. Nobody really talks except for the the main woman. Um, he makes sounds like raptor, like, <laughs> like he's all moving, all weird and stuff. Um, but the two kids end up like killing the twin girls basically, and you know they end up killing all the that family. And then they're like watching on the news how, well, okay, I forgot to mention that the evil doppelgangers are all like wearing red for whatever reason. They're kind of wearing like red jumpsuits and they, they have like scissors as like their weapon kind of. Well, they end up watching the news and finding out that there's like people all over the world or it's like a phenomenon like in town or whatever that uh, there's people in red jumpsuits like killing people. <laughs> so... That's how the story progresses from, like, you know, one evil family to another evil family to, like, they're all over town now. Um, they end up taking the main family's son, capturing him. So the woman goes to the mirror place that she originally went to, finds, like, there's an escalator that goes down. She goes down into, like, this hallway. There's all these rabbits there. And she meets her evil self there. And again, we have like a story time, and uh, basically, I don't know. We just <laughs> we find out how it reveals how like everybody has like a double, and like maybe they were created by the government to be useful, but the doubles don't have souls; they just like imitate things. And we saw how like when she was at the carnival as a girl. There was kind of like a pretend carnival, like down in the in the sewers. And at the beginning of the movie, it talked about how there's subways and sewers and tunnels under the earth, and like nobody knows any purpose for them and stuff. So that's interesting. But we get the story, kind of like the backstory of what's going on and why this is all happening. And uh, anyways, the main female lead ends up killing her evil self. She gets her son, and they leave, and everything is kind of happy in the end. But we find out that at the very beginning, uh, like the doppelganger and the main character swapped places. So really, it's like the evil person who was the good family all along, and she was killing like the the innocent, like real girl, which kind of blows your mind, which you kind of expected early on. Like I, I kind of predicted that already. But then when you try to put like the plots together and stuff, it's like. Hmm. I don't know how this all works out. It's like, okay. And I know there's a lot of commentary, a lot of social, or a lot of um, symbolism and stuff in this movie, I'm sure. There's a lot more that I want to look into it. I don't know exactly what the message is. I think the message is kind of just to look within ourselves and realize, you know, how we can affect other people, stuff like that. Um, I've heard that... A, Get Out has a lot to do with racism and stuff. I didn't really see a lot of that in this. I think maybe this is more inner introspection within ourselves. But um, there's a lot more going on there that I didn't really talk about, I guess. But like I said, I think it had a really creepy, unique story. And I loved how it progressed. It had a lot of comedy, which I loved. It didn't really, you know, scare the hell out of me like I was thinking it would. Uh, you know, like when you're alone at night and you remember like scenes from the movie and kind of spooks you out. But uh, I think it probably would creep out, you know, some people. Uh, but I don't know what else to say, really. There's so much, but I feel like I got to make this kind of short. I liked it. I really did. Um, I think it's definitely a horror movie. And uh, there is a lot of bonus features I didn't watch where he probably explains like what he wanted the movie to mean and stuff. I kind of like some things being open-ended to where it's kind of like to your own 
beliefs or whatever, but, um, like I said, the main, the, the way the main, like, villain spoke was creepy. Uh, I'm not going to really try to imitate it, but she kind of had a, her voice kind of cracked and stuff and, and changed. Um, she didn't really keep kind of the same tone, but, uh. Hmm. But it does make me think of kind of like, yeah, like Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt or, you know, Creep Show or whatever. It's kind of like a cool horror story. Um, you know, there are some movies like slashers that aren't really story driven. It's like there's a killer and he kills people and that's what you get, you know. And then there's like ghost stories or like even The Exorcist, which I consider one of the greatest, the greatest horror movie of all time. There's not a lot of story to that. A girl gets possessed by a devil, and then, you know, they exercise him and get the devil out of her. But there's a lot of really terrifying stuff in that movie. But this was a lot more of a story to tell. Um, so, that's a good thing. It makes me think of, like, the Masters of Horror. It made me think a lot of also the After Dark Horror Fest. I'm just throwing a lot of stuff out there, but um, like this movie Grave Dancers, where these people get drunk and they dance on these graves and then they're like haunted the whole time. And the film progresses, and there's a lot of story in that one. And it kind of made me think of that. How they're nothing alike, really, but just so story oriented. I don't know. There's probably so much I should say about this. But I think that's going to be it. I would definitely recommend it. Especially if you're in the movies like Doppelganger stuff or in The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. If you're looking for really gory stuff, it's not here. If you're looking for a lot of pop-out scares and stuff, it's not really here. But if you're looking for something different and um, something that's going to make you think... Uh, this is it. Oh. So that's going to be it. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Check out for the next film.